channel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hello everybody, welcome back to the Hennessy Performance Vlog. I'm walking around in the shop and I'm with Francisco. What is up Francisco? How's it going? Just making a custom hose for the VA Raptor. Custom hose, do you hear that people? So today we're gonna be walking around in the shop and then we've got something special for you that is coming in right after this. Nathan and I have traveled in a little Italian stallion around the track and talked a little bit about it, so stay tuned just one moment for that. But first, but first, <laughs> Donnie, what's up, baby? Woo, Donnie, <laughs> let's go. How's it going? It's going good, how are you doing? I'm Look, show me your guns, bro. Flex, point to the camera, yes, sir. Donnie. All right, so first up for the crib walk. So for the crib walk, we are coming in on a Goliath 800. Look at this beautiful red supercharger. Perfect for the red truck. This is gonna be 800 horsepower. This is one of the first GM 2020, 2019 plus trucks in the whole world. It's badged as a 700, but it's gonna be an 800. Look at this thing, that's gonna be sweet. Next up, we've got a fully stealth wrapped. I don't know if you can tell, but it's matte white with Expel Stealth. This is getting a V8 in it. This is a Raptor that's getting our V8 Raptor conversion, 750 horsepower. Look at that baby. Wow, that is sweet. Got the custom light bar up top. There's gonna be a V8 in there. There was a V6, gonna be a V8. Stay tuned for the build. And also, it's got Brembos. Those are huge. Six piston calipers, 15.1 inch rotors. That's sweet. <laughs> Daniel, are you serious? You just got this build. Let me tell you guys, Daniel right here is the master technician that builds GT350s with superchargers. Are you serious? 850 horsepower. He got this build this morning. He does these faster than anyone in the entire world. And not just faster, but better. He started when? He started this thing at one o'clock. One o'clock, people. It's like 3.30. He's already got the blower on there. He's a master, he's done, how many of these have you done? Like, a hundred plus? A lot, that's insane. Over a hundred. Yo, Juan, let's go, baby! Dude, check out this polished blower. I can see myself in that thing. My gosh, 700 horsepower in a truck? This is gonna be amazing. Look at this thing. Wow. What do you think about 700 horsepower in a truck? I think that's awesome. It's pretty awesome. I think so too, man. Great job. James, baby. What is up, James? Look at the kicks. Got the fresh kicks. Nice and dirt. Smile. Look at this Heisman right here. Heisman. James, baby, tell me what you're doing, man. Working on this Z06 Corvette. It's getting our 850 package. The heads cam, the lower pulley, headers, just the works. You know, these things these things sound freaking incredible when they're done. They make good power. They put the power down well. This is probably one of my favorite cars that we build, and I love these things. I'm excited to be building them. The classic LT4, coming with 640 horsepower, 650 actually on this car, from the factory, and we're turning it up to 850. That's pretty insane. Also, tell me about your most memorable tattoo. Uh, I'd, probably, I'd say it's this one. I got this to commemorate my trip to Dubai. This is kind of going to be my traveling sleeve. Any, any state that I've lived in or any uh, country that I visit. Got Texas on there, of course. Can't forget the Lone oh. Star State. Sweet. Yeah, a little bit too big for. I'm working on it. Got my arm already done. Boom. Comment below if I should get sleeves. Should I get sleeves? Yes. Yeah, I think I'm gonna get sleeves, guys. What do y'all think? Let me know. Today we're gonna do something a little bit different. I've got Nathan Malinick here. He is our director of design for Hennessy Performance and Hennessy Special Vehicles. He leads all of our design for the entire company in terms of 
uh, how anything's gonna look, how anything's gonna feel, the design DNA of our company, and all sorts of other things. Thanks for joining me on this cool segment. Um, today we're gonna get a little bit of the design perspective. Let's do it. How do you feel? I'm feeling good, I'm ready to go. So we are in a Lamborghini Huracan. This car is here getting a twin turbo system. We're still finalizing our baseline testing and Nathan actually has never been in a Lamborghini Huracan, is that correct? Yep, first time. First time. So we're gonna talk a little bit about this car and what we like, what we don't like, and we'll just see how it goes. So first things first, we're on the inside of the car, obviously. We just started it up, V10, naturally aspirated, cool sound and everything. This is a supercar by all means, but let's just talk about the interior. Mm -hmm. What's your design perspective on what's going on in here? I like it, it's definitely unique. I mean, you're never gonna think that you're in a normal car when you, when you sit in this, for sure. And I think when you start it up too, like you said, the noise, like you have a lot of that drama that Lamborghini is so good at giving the, the user that really no one else, I think, does drama like Lamborghini does. That's definitely like their selling point. Drama is a perfect word. I really like that. Yeah. And I, this is like, everything starts right here with the whole drama thing. You've got... You've got a like a battle switch basically yeah. to lift up, so you can't just you know there's drama right from the beginning just to start the engine. So mm -hmm. that's a really cool feature. Not many other people do it that I really can think of off the top of my head. Yeah. The only thing I would say about this is I kind of wish it was like aluminum. It's kind of plasticky, yeah. but yeah. the the thought is there. Yeah, the experience of it and everything. But but I agree. Yeah, it's it kind of it feels a little. Another crazy. thing about that I always notice about Audi and Volkswagen Lamborghini is all their switches and knobs are so distinctly clicky. Yeah. And that's a plus for you or a negative? Um, or it's just something that stands out? It stands out. It would be a plus for me if these knobs were like heavier, but again, they're kind of plastic. The click feels uh, good, okay. but I wish the, the knob itself was like aluminum or something. I gotcha, yeah, yeah. I, I see what you mean. It has a little bit of play in it. It does, uh, yeah. Yeah, but I mean, keep in mind, that, so this is Lamborghini's by far their most successful in terms of sales car. Yeah. And yeah. so, I mean, all those things, uh, it, it's just hard to do that on such a, a large scale like this, but yeah. I, I do see what you mean. So, Let's put it in drive, and speaking about putting it in drive, there is no drive. All you all you do on a Lamborghini is oh, you, you click okay. into first, uh, which is so interesting. Um, clicking into first, you gotta touch the paddles. What do you think about the paddles? They're cool, and they sound like they're metal. Yeah. So that's good. They are metal, they're fixed, which my opinion on fixed paddles is I really don't like them because if I'm trying to turn, I can't like downshift in a turn, which, in theory, if you're like on a track, you probably don't want to downshift in a turn because you don't want to unsettle the car. Mm -hmm. But when I'm driving on the street and I want to click up or down a gear mid-turn, it is kind of annoying, but yeah. that's just my take on it. What do you yeah. think about fixed paddles? Um, fixed paddles. Well, I know Ferrari is a big proponent of them. Maybe it's an Italian thing, but McLaren are not fixed. Yeah, I think I could I could see it either way, but I think it makes sense just from a usability standpoint to have them on the wheel. So if, if you're crossed up, right, you don't have to like take your hand off the wheel. But yeah, I don't know. I'm not a race car driver either. So this is a really nice driving car yeah, when you're just good. kind of cruising. Yeah. So it's no big deal. We're in Strata mode, so the drive mode uh, switch is on the steering wheel itself. You've got Sport and you've got Corsa. Yep. Um, Sport is obviously Sport. Corsa is kind of the ultimate mode. The exhaust is open. I actually think that Corsa is manual only. Yeah, and it turns ESC off. So basically, it's your it's your track mode and your fun having mode. Yeah. Um, I want to keep it in auto, so I'm going to put it back into Sport. So you can probably hear a little bit of difference. The exhaust is open. Oh yeah. And it kind of holds holds the gears out higher. Yeah. So the paddles are aluminum, but they're pretty quiet. Like you can shift almost silently, whereas I know McLarens are super clicky. Yeah, they are. Yeah. Does the act. How's the action feel on it? 
Uh, the action of shifting feels good. Okay. Yeah, I've never analyzed stuff like this this much, so this, yeah. is, uh, this is definitely very interesting. <laughs> I'll tell you one thing I really like about this interior is the fact that on the dash, there really is no big giant screen, anything that really dates this car. Because I know this car has been in production for a number of years now, but if you look at the dashboard, it's very simple, very clean. You've got a digital IP and a little, you know, kind of cool gauge screen here. But I think this is more of a timeless design um, down the road um, than a lot of the cars that, you know, have like a big kind of screen in the center that will ultimately date the car because the technology goes out of um, out of date so quickly. So that's right. something I really like. Uh, yeah, that's an interesting thought. That's, that's honestly, so weird like the only other car i can think of which is basically the same car that kind of has this is the r8 right there is no screen here okay and the only screen is right here yeah which to me is weird but i i get your point in saying that it, it doesn't like date the car yeah um and i'm not saying you can't do that but i think yeah. i think the i think the long term if you're looking for a long term success of a design having technology that can be hidden away so that yeah. as it goes out of date, you, you can put it away. But in the meantime, like, you know, you use it while it's relevant. Right. It's going to be the successful path. Um, so obviously the main part about this car is what's behind you, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. B10. Pretty Natural, sweet. Naturally aspirated. Naturally aspirated. Love which you You love it. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. You're, I know you're a big turbo guy. I love which turbos. This is, <laughs> this yeah. is going to become that. This is going to become turbo cars. I'm, you convinced me the other day about turbos, though. Oh, I'm on the turbo that's train. That's true. Now for, but, I, but I mean, yes, yeah. I love it. I cars. bought a Mark IV Supra and took him for a ride in it, and now he's a turbo fan. Yeah. So it was that easy. Yeah. Uh, and when you get a chance, when this is done, when we take it out again and do the same oh. thing, this <laughs> car is going to be so different. How much? So how much horsepower is this getting? Uh, so this will be. It's like a 900 package. Okay. So it'll make about 750 horsepower at the wheels on the dyno. Um, and right now they're baseline in the in the mid 500s. Okay, so it's so going to pick up pick up over 200 horsepower at the yeah. tire. And it's a it's a completely changed car. Yeah, absolutely. It's a different car. Yeah. So um, let's continue our baseline testing and just see how this thing sounds. Let's do it. It's legs uh, around 6,000 RPM. If you can kind of feel that, it it kind of picks up a lot more. Yeah. Um, the cool thing about turbos is you still keep the same displacement, so that's right. not going away. But when the turbos hit, it's just like way faster. But this is not a slow car by any means, of course. Yeah. No, that that felt good. Yeah. It felt really good. Do they have the that little? No, this doesn't have it. The optional cup holder. Oh, really? Yeah. That's such a cool cup holder. Okay, that's nice. You can put like a credit card or something there. <laughs> that's like, what are you gonna do with that? I guess it's just for your phone. Ah. Uh, okay, you've got like little. That's good. You put some some cash. Put a twenty <laughs> for gas. I don't. Yeah. Oh, let's look at the outside. Yeah. This is cool too. Have you seen? Paid attention to this. Oh, is there some storage yeah, space? Yeah, I never knew oh. that. That's really cool. Yeah. I'm it, kind I'm, of embarrassed. I'm sure if they made this car today, this would be a wireless charging spot for your phone. Yeah. Absolutely. I would hope at least. Well, too, and I know the Evos, this is like, this is what goes against what I was talking about earlier, but the Evos have 
like it's all one big screen here now. Oh, interesting. I haven't been in an Evo, so. Yeah, well, I mean, nice. I've just seen it on, yeah. online, but. Cool. Um, yeah, let's look at the outside. It sounds pretty good. You can't beat that noise. So, Lamborghini Huracan, at this point, it's a classic car. Like, this is, this is something that is gonna go down in the history books as one of the best Lamborghinis of all time. You think? I would say it has to, right? It's had a long life cycle. Yeah, definitely a lot, yeah. The sales have been tremendous. Yeah, they've been huge. There's some racing, um, you know, success that they've had in terms of, That's like, true, yeah, the Corset, yeah. They've had, I, you probably know more so on the racing success, but I'm talking about, like, these cars get so heavily modified, and there's a lot of records broken um, in, like, rolling quarter miles, right. half miles, and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. There's people that modify these to 3,500 horsepower and are doing 236 miles an hour in a rolling quarter mile, so. That's That's crazy. pretty phenomenal. It is. Um... What do you think about this car, man? Um, you want my honest? <laughs> I want your honest opinion. Okay, well, I agree. I think it's a classic Lamborghini. I think it's um, definitely a Lamborghini, for sure. Like, you, you would never mistake this for a Ferrari or for Aston Martin for a McLaren. One of the things that is so cool to me on this car is the theme it was an hexagonal or each you if you look on a lot of different this is i mean people know this but there's like one two three four five six sides six sides on the mirrors there's um like even even on the the greenhouse kind of surround there if you count them right here there's six there's sides. hexagons everywhere on this car everywhere. that's a kind of cool theme that that they that they did throughout the car um I think the proportion of it is really nice. Like this is this is not a big car. No. In terms of like, is this my favorite car of all time? No, it's not. I love the wheels. These are a classic Italian um, wheels that Alpha and others have, have done. But but again, if you look on these wheels, there's six sides to the wheels. Typically, it would just be a circle, like on the Murcielago. But there's six sides even on the wheels. Uh, I think the, the front. Um, the DRG down the road graphic is really nice, super distinct. I mean, this is a, a great view. Yeah, I mean, yeah, this like, car looks a good. Really good looking car.